Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Finding It All by Stacy Komazinski, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. Chloe Larson listened to Gabby babble on and on, thinking, wow, can this girl talk? Her best friend was never quiet. It was easy to see why people flocked to her with her bubbly personality and long, wavy dark hair that seemed to bounce everywhere when she spoke. Chloe admired her animation and energy. With how close they were, one would think they had been childhood friends, but it had only been seven years. They had met the first week of their freshman year in college when a fire alarm went off late one night. While waiting in the grassy quad to go back to the dorms, getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, Gabriela Rodriguez leaned over to Chloe and said, Thank God we're in an all-girls dorm. I'm not wearing a bra, and believe me, I need one. God did not bless me with that kind of perkiness. She easily made Chloe laugh, and they had been best friends since. They met their other roommate and best friend, Jessica Taylor, later that same year. Chloe and Gabby had joined Le Jess one day for lunch in the cafeteria, and the three of them clicked. While Jess might have been a bit reserved at first, it didn't take long for her sarcastic side to show. This, she later told Gabby and Chloe, she blamed entirely on their encouraging natures and relentlessly infectious personalities. Chloe and Gabby could see, even from that first day, that Jess fit in well with their, her sharp and witty comments. Chloe knew she was lucky to have found them. Growing up had been lonely, and these two amazing women had filled an emptiness she'd carried for years. She couldn't imagine going through life without them. Now, standing in their kitchen as Gabby continued her talking rampage, Chloe gathered her things for work. She usually brought breakfast and lunch with her and ate while she multitasked at her desk. Most days, she grabbed an apple and a snack, too, just in case she had to stay late or head out to get a story near the end of the day. Jess walked through the doorway and gave Chloe a sideways look as she twisted her hand in a gesture that said, Wind her up and watch her go. Chloe tipped her head up and smiled. Luckily, Chloe and Jess were the listening type and didn't mind Gabby's love of talking or overall excited nature. Instead of packing her up things, t packing up her things too, Gabby waved her hands around, illustrating the crazy dream she'd had the night before, which featured a gorgeous man leading her through a sensual Latin dance. She put her arms up, showing off a tango hold. He was so close I could feel his breath and the warm skin of his bare chest. So sexy. Chloe didn't share the same energy Gabby had in the morning, so she wasn't processing every word her friend said. Instead, she focused on getting out of the house and to work on time, waiting for the right moment to cut in and tell Gabby to get a move on. Finally, Gabby's story died down, and she stared off lost in her dream. Chloe seized her opportunity. Gabby, we need to get going or we'll be late. I can't miss today's morning meeting. Ever since Gabby's car died a few weeks ago, Chloe had let her share her car. It was the least she could do. After all, Gabby had driven Chloe around all through college. Conveniently, Gabby didn't work far from Chloe either. Chloe focused on Gabby. Who's driving today? Gabby took a breath, having finally finished recounting her dream. She answered Chloe with a shrug. I'm good either way. I plan to go out at lunch, but I can walk. Do you remember that guy I met last week at the farmer's market, Rob? He asked me to meet him for coffee today around the corner from the hospital. So you can just drop me off, that way you don't have to drive the news van if you need to go out. Chloe nodded. Oh yeah? Coffee? That's great. She made a move toward the door. I'll start carrying my stuff out to the car. Chloe walked out to the curb where her little white car waited. The sun already shone bright overhead and Chloe could tell that it would be another hot July day in Texas. She opened the back door and put down her bags, then returned to the driver's side to start up the engine. She made sure to crank the air so the car would start to cool down. Heading back inside the house, she smoothed her low po ponytail, a perfect style for a low-maintenance Friday in the office. The cute townhouse the three girls shared sat on a quiet street in a safe neighborhood near the outskirts of Gallerston. The friends had found the place right after graduation three years ago. They all decided to stay in the city where they went to college. Chloe had no interest in going back to Pennsylvania where she grew up, too many bad memories. Jess was in a similar situation. She didn't want to go back to Oklahoma to live with her crazy mom. Gabby, on the other hand, loved the place she grew up and wanted to live close to home. Of course, she loved it. Her mom was amazing. Plus, she came to visit every couple of weeks. In return, the girls visited Mama R often and saw her every holiday. Gabby's mom acted as a surrogate to all of them, loving each as if they were her own. Once back inside, Chloe could see that her nudge was successful. Gabby quickly gathered the last of her things and headed out for the door. Jess also looked ready to head out. 
Her sunglasses sat on top of her head and her bags waited by the door. Jess was the most efficient person Chloe knew. She was quick to make decisions, quick to get things done, and quick to accomplish anything she put her mind to. It was these characteristics that helped drive Jess to early success in her career as a programmer. She'd started out writing code to develop statistical programs for an IT firm. She did so well that she soon climbed the ranks and now ran a project for one of the firm's larger customers. Chloe could see Jess running her own company one day. Chloe grabbed the last of her stuff and smiled at Jess. When will you be home tonight? Jess smirked. It's the end of the week, so I will try to be home at the regular time or even earlier if I can manage it. Gabby opened the front door for Chloe and added over her shoulder. I sure hope so, since I have a new recipe I'm trying out tonight. I can't wait. You know I live for Friday nights with your cooking and Chloe's desserts. Chloe had smiled as they made their way to the car, admiring Gabby's dress. Is that the new one you ordered on Monday? It's so cute on you. To herself, she added, with Gabby's curves and dark brown curly hair, anything looks good on this girl. Trim and of average height, Chloe stood a bit taller than Gabby and was less curvy, but still had them in all the right spots. Gabby smiled back. I bought this and a jumpsuit, but decided this was more appropriate for a dietitian to wear to work. Since it's strapless, I'll save the jumpsuit for going out tomorrow night. Chloe got in the driver's seat and looked at Gabby. Jess and I should get something new for tomorrow night, too. Maybe we can run to the new shopping area that recently opened on Strayer Street. I heard good things about it from Maya at work. Gabby got the same excited look in her eyes she always did any time someone mentioned shopping. Glancing at her phone, she scrolled for some music to play. Yeah, we'll head there tomorrow morning. We can stop after class. Gabby taught Latin hip-hop dance classes Saturday mornings and usually managed to drag Chloe and Jess with her. Neither girl thought of it as dragging, though. Maybe just a drag to get moving early on a Saturday. Gabby's classes were a lot of fun because she was a great teacher. She kept the steps simple for those who just wanted to have fun, but added in some spicy moves for anyone who wanted more of a challenge. Gabby taught other classes for more advanced dancers during the week around her hours at the hospital, but this one was more for fun, exercise, and laughter. Gabby chose a song with a salsa flair. Out of the corner of her eye, Chloe saw her friend counting the beat aloud and tapping her feet. Is this song for tomorrow? She asked as she drove. Gabby nodded. Yeah, I've, I've come up with some really good moves to this next part where the refrain comes in. Wait for it. Good stuff, right? Chloe agreed. It's awesome. Are, are the moves anything like last week? Hell nah, totally different. I can't stand repeating the same stuff. So boring. Gabby's amazing imagination was just one more thing that made her so good at dancing. It didn't take them long to pull up to the employee entrance at the hospital. Gabby grabbed her purse and lunch from the back seat. Before she closed the door, she said, I'll text you later and give you at least a 30-minute warning. Chloe laughed. I'm good with that. Pray for me that today is a quiet day. I'm not in the mood for a busy Friday. Gabby smiled in agreement. Pray for me that this guy I'm meeting for coffee doesn't turn out to be a creep like every other guy recently. Chloe shook her head. Already done. We can't take too many more of them. All right, I gotta run. Talk later. Chloe waved as Gabby shut the door and each went their separate ways. Chloe's day passed as she'd hoped, quietly. No lectures from Lou, her boss, since she made the meeting on time. He didn't assign her any breaking news stories, which kept it a mild day. Working at the local Nine News meant some days got crazy while others seemed lifeless. Chloe liked both atmospheres as long as there weren't too many of the same right in a row. Too many crazy days left her exhausted, and too many quiet days made her think she could die of boredom. Variability made the job interesting. Getting the job after graduating college, she'd at, le at first assumed it would just pay the bills, but over the years, she'd started to like the place. They liked her, too, and had promoted her to field reporter a few months ago. However, writing fiction made Chloe feel alive. Something kept drawing her back to it. It was lonely growing up without any brothers or sisters. Friends were scarce for her, too. There had been her neighbor, Jeremy, when she was young, but he'd faded away in middle school. From then until college, stories became Chloe's escape. Now, Chloe still loved using her imagination. She turned her love of writing into a career, but writing about current events wasn't the same as writing short stories. At home, she wrote as much as she could and always kept a book on her nightstand. Eventually, she planned to try her hand at writing a novel, but for now, she needed a paycheck, and writing news stories provided that. Sometimes, though, she imagined getting a Ph.D. in literature or teaching college writing classes. Someday. Today, Chloe stayed in the office and worked on a few feature ideas. 
One of them involved the new shopping center that she and the girls planned to hit off tomorrow, part of the Strayer Street shops located in an area of the city slowly being revived. Untouched since the 1970s, a new developer had come to town late last year and made remodeling the area, shops included, his big project. The entire shopping center had just opened a few weeks ago. Stopping there tomorrow would give Chloe some perspective for the article. It would also be fun to see the area come alive. The girls couldn't wait to try out all the new places that had opened. They already had their favorite haunts around town, but enjoyed adding a few new ones to the list every now and then. Chloe really liked being with her friends out on the town. Most Saturday nights, they either went dancing at a club, to a bar with a live band, or to a coffee shop, which was why she needed something new to wear. She thought back over the last few months and realized she hadn't bought anything new in quite a while. It was time to put an end to it. She grabbed her phone to text Jess. Chloe, I'm jealous over Gab's new clothes. Shopping tomorrow? Jess, definitely, but I'm not buying a jumpsuit like Gabby's. I couldn't pull that off. Chloe, you can too. Jess, eh. Chloe, how about the new Strayer Street shops? Jess, yep. Things have seemed a bit mundane lately, Chloe thought. Her job offered excitement sometimes, but her personal life could do with a kick. Maybe she needed more than new clothes. She thought about a trip to the Gulf Coast. That could be fun. She and the girls had spent a few summers there in college renting a house near the beach. Maybe they could find a small place for a few days in August. They could also visit Gabby's mom. She lived in a quaint little town outside Gallerston called Harmony. The town consisted of a couple streets where you could find all the basics for the local folks before the land opened to ranches. Chloe always found it so relaxing there. Back to work, Chloe, she told herself, snapping out of her daydream. She wanted to submit at least one of her articles from earlier in the week. All the ideas about escaping for a few days would have to wait. She'd talk to her friends later and see what they thought of taking a quick trip together before summer ended. Once she buckled down, it didn't take long before she completed one of her articles. Right as she finished, a text came in from Gabby. Gabby, hey, I'll be ready on time at 4.30. Does that work for you? Chloe, yep, I should be done by then, too. Chloe, do you need any ingredients for dinner, dinner tonight? Gabby, no, I picked up a few things yesterday, so I'm good. Do you need anything? Gabby, what are you making tonight? Give me something to dream about so as I count down the minutes to the weekend. Chloe, not positive. I have what I need to invent something with chocolate and peanut butter. Gabby, hmm. 